Welcome back to another innovation review. Today, we're going to check out the XF690 from Cy Rusher. First, let's talk about the looks. So the looks on the XF690 are very akin to a lot of the Cyrusher bikes. We've got these fat tires, we've got these very cool paint designs on here. So it really fits into the family really well. The only thing that is different about the 690 is that it folds. The 900, 800, and the 650, none of those bikes fold. And so that's one of the features about this bike that is going to differentiate itself from their other offerings. We've got a few cool colors here. We've got red, green, blue, and yellow. We have got our hands on the yellow one. And I really liked the red version. I thought that they pulled it off really well, but I'm really digging this yellow version of the bike. The fenders and rack also come with the 690, and that just kind of gives you a lot of adaptability. We've got those fenders that'll keep all the dirt and stuff out of your face, and then we've got the rack so you can you know, turn this into kind of whatever you want to do with it. I've seen people that will install some fishing rod holders in the back. I've seen people that, you know, they'll put their pannier bags in the back. So there's lots of options here, and it comes across as a very versatile bike, especially because it folds up. So if you are in a spot that space is an issue, you don't have a garage, you don't have a place to park it, if you need to fold it up to get out of the way, you can do that. Next, let's talk about the motor. Right here in the back, we have got this rear gear hubbed motor. This is a Lanklessy branded motor, and it's advertised at 1,000 watts peak power. Now, that is not the nominal watts value. If I had to guess, because I'm not 100% positive, I'm pretty sure this is a 500 to 750 watt motor, and that's pretty apparent in those lower speeds from 0 to 20. And we'll get into why specifically that is later on in the video. As far as motor noise goes, it was very on par with all of the Cyrusher bikes we've tested in the past is very on par with a lot of the bikes we've tested in the past. You do get a little bit of that electric motor noise, but when we're dealing with some of these mid-tier hub motors, they all kind of act the same. They all kind of sound the same. If you've ever heard a geared rear hub motor on a mid-level bike, then you know what it sounds like. Those big tires that we've got, those big old knobbies on there, they tend to make quite a bit of road noise. And so it does hide a little bit of the motor noise. So honestly, when you are riding around, it's mostly the tire noise that you're going to hear. Next, let's talk about the battery. The battery we have in here is a 48 volt, 12.8 amp hour, 615 watt hour battery. One of the cool things about this battery is it does install into the down tube and it weighs in just over that 7 pounds, 7.04 pounds to be exact. Once you've got it fully charged, which should take anywhere between 4 to 5 to 6 hours, you can get an estimated 25 to 50 miles on that. And I feel like based on my riding experience, that is probably pretty reasonable to get. Now, when we look at the watt hours on the battery, it is a little bit on the lower side, especially when we consider that some of these bikes come with 16 amp hour batteries, 17 amp hour batteries. It's not, you know, an 8 amp hour battery, 9 amp hour battery. It does have a little bit more juice to it, but it's definitely a little bit under average in my opinion. And that's just something for you to take into consideration depending on how you're going to use this. If you have about a 30 mile commute where it's 15 miles one way, 15 miles back, you should be safe hitting that with the 690. One of my favorite design features here as it relates to the battery is on the down tube, on the lower half of the folding part of the down tube, that is where the charging port is. Now with most of these batteries, they will just have a small hole in the down tube towards where the battery is that you would just plug it in straight into the battery. But with this design, you you're actually able to plug it in here in the back. And there's a few reasons why that's nice. Number one, if you were to, for some reason, pull out the battery while you still have the charger in there, that could cause some damage to the, the charging port on the battery or the charging cable. And then a lot of times we'll just have a little plastic cap cover grommet thing that you'll just shove in there. And if you don't take that out, you can basically rip that out as you're putting the thing in. It's just like it's a whole mess sometimes. And so that's just a small little attention detail that I like. Next, let's talk about the brakes. On the 690, we have some Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. We have got these Zoom hydraulic brake levers up here in the front with motor cutoff, which is an excellent safety feature. Then we've got these Zoom brake calipers here at the bottom with 180 millimeter discs on both the front and the rear. As far as stopping power goes, these things stop. They just, they stop. I feel like just out of the box, they were tuned really well. I don't even remember if I had to adjust the calipers at all, which is normally the case when you have a bike that is shipped to you. You'll have to adjust the calipers a little bit based on how you're putting that front wheel in. But I sunk the front wheel in, and this thing just uh, it just stopped. It was just set up perfect out of the box. 
And that doesn't happen every time, which is, you know, why I bring it up. When we do the braking test, when we are doing the ride test portion, this thing is stopping less than 10 feet, going 20 miles per hour, which is, you know, fairly impressive based on the weight of the bike, the speed of the bike, and, uh, yeah, the amount of control that you have when you stop with it is also, also pretty intense. It is nice that we have hydraulic disc brakes over mechanical disc brakes on this particular bike based on the speed and the weight, and it's something that we would just expect, you know, for a bike at this price point. Next, let's talk about the gears. The XF690 is a 27 speed, so we have got a 3x9 crank set. It utilizes the Shimano M370, and from a usability standpoint, they were pretty easy to use. The only thing that I would do as far as further riding goes is probably just adjust how the derailleur was set up. As many of you know, that can be sometimes, you know, a pain in the butt, kind of a long process, especially if there's, you know, a little trial and error that needs to happen. So for this unit right out of the box, which is generally how we test these bikes, it probably could have used some adjustment, but it wasn't too bad. Just felt like it was off by, you know, just a little bit in some of those gears that we were, uh, we were going through in the ride test. Then we've got these Pro Wheel 170 millimeter cranks and then some aluminum pedals with reflectors. Nothing really special about the pedals, kind of run of the mill. If I was going to keep the bike long term, probably something that I would look at upgrading, you know, spending 30, 40 bucks to get something maybe that even matched the color. I feel like that would be kind of fun. But as for now, these pedals, they do the job and I don't have any complaints about them. Next, let's talk about the extras. This bike comes with a few extras and we'll start right up here in the front at the headlight. One of the things that is nice about this headlight is that it is integrated into the battery, so no extra batteries you got to carry around. As long as you got juice in the battery to run the bike, you can run the light, which also comes with the bonus of being able to turn it on using the keypad. You're just going to hold down the up button for a little bit, and then boom, the light will come on. And then in the back, we have got this tail light. Now, the tail light is not integrated into the battery, so we're going to be missing a few of those features, such as being able to run the light on the battery, or having the battery be able to signal when we're stopping. So those are just a few things that we miss out. Plus, we've got to carry around, you know, some extra batteries, and I'm not 100% sure what the batteries are for this. That's something where, you know, if you end up getting the bike, you have to pop it out and, you know, see see what batteries you need. And then sticking in here in the back, we've also got this rear rack that comes with the bike. Now, the rack here is a little bit on the smaller side. As far as the construction and tubing goes, it's got a pretty decent deck space up here. And we've definitely got a few mounting points, which is nice to give us some different options when we're looking to mount this or customize this in some way. I'm not exactly sure what the max weight is on the rear rack. I imagine it would be somewhere middle tier. There's lots of racks that are kind of like this. They carry, you know, 45 to 70 pounds somewhere in there so i would imagine you wouldn't have too much trouble if you tried to carry something you know around that weight on this rack the bike also comes with fenders so we've got these fenders up here in the front and in the rear as far as fenders go these are not my favorite fenders they are plastic which you guys know i'm a big fan of they are a little bit on the lighter side so a little bit more on the flimsy side but there's a lot of different mounting points so i don't run into them flapping around or catching wind or, or anything like that but i just feel like they could be constructed maybe a little bit better and also maybe designed in such a way to accent the bike a little bit better so no real complaints i mean they do what they need to do they cover the tire keep the mud from going in my face so i love them for that i just feel like there's areas that they can improve here you know on these fenders Next, let's talk about the essentials. So the 690 ships with a few of the things that you need to put it together. Now, as far as putting it together, there's not really a whole lot you have to do. I think we had to turn the headset around, install the handlebars, and install the front tire. Then we installed the pedals and the fender and the light. It took us about 35 to 45 minutes, I believe, to go from unboxing to having this ready to ride. The 690 comes with an owner's manual. It also comes with a bike lock and an air pump. They also included all the tools we needed to put it together, which is a nice touch. We see a lot of these bikes where there's one or two other tools that we need. But with this kit that they gave you, we were able to put everything together with just, uh, you know, what they provided, which was nice. Next, let's talk about the folding. As we mentioned in the beginning of this review, the 690 is the only Cyrusher bike that folds. So it gets its own special little section. Folding it up is fairly easy. It has a two-step latch, and then you can fold it up. One of the other nice things about it is it does have a stand here at the bottom of the frame, which is nice because that is what's going to rest on the ground, so you're not scratching up your bike. You're just scratching up this, you know, little metal thing down here that was designed to, you know, be scratched up. Then once you've got it folded up, those dimensions are 45 inches by 25.5 inches by 42 inches. By no means does this transform into a very small bike that you could put in a small car. But from my perspective, it seems more like this is going to be something that saves you space in a storage situation. Because even in that folded 
dimension that's still, you know, 45 by 45 was one of those dimensions. So it's like, okay, you need, you know, you're going to need some space in order to transport this bike. And so if that is an issue, you're like, hey, I don't have anything to transport it, then you'd probably want to look at an e-bike specific bike rack. This is something that you're going to have to get something a little bit beefier to, uh, to make sure it's safe. Next, let's talk about the suspension. The front forks on the 690 have 80 millimeters of travel, 35 millimeters of deformation. They also come with lockout and preload adjustments. When we pulled it right out of the box, it was a little squishy, but it was nice, giving us a very comfortable ride. Probably something you would have to tweak and design for, you know, your weight, your riding style, all that sort of stuff. And since the 690 is a full suspension bike, we have also got this rear suspension back here, one of the HLT 100s, a common sight on these bikes. The other part of suspension that we like to talk about is the tires. So the tires we have here are these 26 by 4 inch Chao Yang tires. Now we don't have any sidewall reflective stripes here, but they do have extra puncture protection, which is nice, especially with a bike like this. You're going to want to take it off roads. You're going to want to take it in places where, you know, you might pick up a nail or whatever weird thing pops into your tire. So having that bit of extra protection is nice. As far as PSI goes, it has a max PSI of 20, and then, you know, it's kind of up to you to experiment with lower PSIs, given your environment. So if you're on a beach, you wanted to drop it down to 3, 4, 5, something wild like that, you could do that, but it's not recommended to go over 20. The other part of suspension we like to talk about is the butt suspension. So the saddle on here we've got is a Lanklessy Sport saddle. It was fairly comfortable. I believe it was the same saddle that was on the model last year. No real complaints about it. It was fine for me. And if I was going to keep the bike long term, probably not something I would necessarily upgrade. Next, let's talk about the controls. Similar to the XF650, the XF690 also comes with this S700 display. And that display is going to show us a few things. We've got a charge indicator, speedometer, odometer, trip odometer, pedal assist level, time, and errors if any. We don't have a watt readout or a clock on this one, but it is going to give us quite a bit of information. And then over here on the right-hand side, we have got the throttle. Now, it is a half-grip twist throttle. The one thing about this, and if you've been watching some reviews, you know that I seem to be on a vendetta against twist throttles. The difference between this twist throttle and most of the other twist throttles is the other twist throttles are paired with one of those half-ergonomic grips. And I love ergonomic grips, so this isn't about ergonomic grips. It's just that when the ergonomic grips meet the throttle, there's not a good grip there right so it's like i would either have to rely my grip is on the throttle which isn't necessarily good or safe or i've just got a very weird half grip on the half grip so i got a quarter grip right on some of these twist throttles just because the way they meet not really a good spot to grab it but with this one it is an even surface all the way across so in my opinion it just felt like it was a little bit safer and my grip wasn't really interrupted quite as much this isn't going to get me to change my mind about thumb throttles but this one's better. This is a step in the right direction. I felt like, you know, the grip was good. Next, let's talk about who this might be for. First and foremost, I would like it known that this is a big bike. I know it looks big, and you're thinking it's probably medium big. It is big, big. The standover height here is almost 32 inches, and that is a lot taller than most of the bikes, even the bigger bikes that we review. I had seen some stuff online where people had ordered the bike, and then they get the bike, and they're like, it's too big for me. You know, they like everything about it. They're excited to get it, but they're, you know, they're too short. And that's just something right out of the gate I wanted to let you know. If you are vertically challenged, as some would say, then this is probably not the ideal bike for you. And combined with that, the reach on here is right around that 22 inches, which isn't too bad necessarily. But when we see a lot of those bikes that are, you know, 18 inches or so, adding an extra five inches to that is, you know, it's, it's substantial. So if you are actually interested in purchasing this bike, I would double check the geometry measurements in the description. We've got all of those hand measured so you can see if this bike's going to fit you. So to be on the safe side, I would probably say 5'11", the smallest I would recommend anybody get this bike. Now there's plenty of you know smaller people that ride bigger bikes and they're into it and that's awesome. But if you're not that person that knows you want a big bike and you know the challenges that come with that, then I would recommend you know maybe looking at something else. As far as use cases go, this is probably a bike that would be best suited for small commutes in the city, kind of in the town, some of those paved bike trails, and then probably getting into some softer bike trails and maybe treading around in the woods a little bit. This isn't a bike that's designed to, you know, take some, some boosty kickers or anything like that. This is a bike that is designed to keep all wheels on the ground at all times and get you where you need to go. 
And that's going to do it for the nuts and bolts of the bike. Let's go ahead and send it out to myself for the ride test. All right, guys, we are out here for the ride test portion on the Cy Rusher XF690. So let's go ahead and power the bike on. You can hold this middle button over here, and the display is going to come on. Now, let's test this out if it were a acoustic bike, right? So we got it in pedal assist level zero. So let's go ahead and just kind of go through some of these gears. So one one right here is very, very light. I mean, this would be useful for, you know, climbing up something that was pretty steep. And if you know how gears work, I apologize for the uh, oversimplification. One, three, four, one, five. Now we are getting a little into a little bit of cross thread in here. There we go. Shift back down. Kind of that two, 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 three, two, four, two, five. 2.6, 2.7, let's go ahead and shift it up into third here. There we go. So the derailleur on this particular model could probably use a little bit of adjustment, but as far as the ratios go, they feel, they feel pretty solid. And again, we're pedaling this you know, fairly big bike with no power, going about 10 miles per hour. One of the nice things about this display is it is gonna show us how fast we're going even if even if the motor is off. There are some bikes that won't show us that, so it's cool that, you know, we have this little feature built in right here. So let's go ahead and let's mess around with the pedal assists here. Let's go into pedal assist level one. Getting some pretty solid power right out the gate. Until about that 11 mile per hour mark. Let's hit pedal assist level two. Gonna hit that 14, 15, pedal assist level three. Just gonna shift all the way up here. Get to that 18, 19 miles an hour. And these big fat tires are just going over like, you know, bumps and gravel, plus it's full suspension. It's, uh, it's pretty wild, like sitting on a cloud. I mean, it might even be dangerous to put a suspension seat post or something like that on here, just because maybe you just fall asleep. Just because it's so comfortable. All right, let's go ahead and go this way. Again, getting quite a bit of power right out the gate. Then the skip a beat going up the incline. And that's not too crazy of an incline either. We'll go over here and we'll, we'll test it out on some higher inclines. But three is getting up to that 19 miles per hour. Put in a medium amount of work here. Let's go ahead and put pulse this level four. And takes that 22-ish miles per hour. Now the thing about this one that was similar to the other 690 that we had tested last year was there was quite a ramp up to anything after 20 miles per hour. So once you kind of get to that 20 miles per hour, you can do that fairly easily. But as soon as you get over that 20 miles per hour, it seemed like it took us quite a while to get up to that top speed of right around that 28 miles per hour. All right, and pedal assist level five. I think it's just kind of that slow ramp up to get there. And we kind of hit that 25, 26 miles per hour. And then it would just take us quite a bit longer to get to, uh, to 28. So it definitely has a lot of power and 
a lot of torque right there between zero and 20, but once we get after 20, you know, there's that slower ramp up. So let's go ahead, stop real quick. I got these real beefy zoom hydraulic disc brakes that work really well. Let's go ahead and put it down at pedal assist level zero and only throttle, ready? What? Oh, that's right. So guys, when you have the bike process level zero, that is your safety here for the twist throttle. And then once we put in pedal assist level one, we've got access to the throttle. And this is gonna ramp us up to that eight, nine, 10 ish miles per hour. Now, something to note here is we don't have the full gambit of power here on the throttle. So the throttle is gonna be hindered by the level of pedal assist that we're in. So if we go to pedal assist level two, you know, we're going a little faster, we're going to pedal assist level three. We're going a little faster, we're going to pedal assist level four and five, and you get it. You guys know how that works. Let's go ahead and pop over here, see if we can't take it up and down a few more, a few more inclines. Now this bike being as heavy as it is, this is not something where you're gonna be in, you know, mountain country and just going up and down mountains. I think there's, you know, certain scenarios where that could work. But for the most part, this is something that's really gonna shine in, you know, maybe the hills or, you know, anything that doesn't have hills, this thing just, you know, just rolls around in. So let's go ahead and see about hitting some of these inclines here real quick. Let's see. That's, that's an incline, boy. All right, so we get that really high gear. We're in one, one over here. Let's go ahead and just climb up this incline here. Now the motor is, you know, struggling a little bit to get through there, but when you've got it in one, one, I barely put any effort into it and the motor just kind of helped me get up there a little bit. Let's go ahead and put it in a lower pedal assist level. Let's see if that gearing ratio doesn't help us out a little bit. So now if you're going straight down this, this feels like a pretty decent descent. We don't have, you know, some real high front fork geometry here. So this is something that would, uh, you know, be ideal for going like right down the mountain or anything straight down these cliffs. It seemed like the motor struggled a little bit less when I had it in pedal assist level one. I felt like I was putting in the same amount of work. It just sounded like the motor was just, I don't know, it was performing a little bit better there. So we have gone through the gears. Let's go ahead and do a braking test on this bad boy. Again, we're gonna get going up to that, uh, close to that top speed. We'll do throttle only for this one. So right around at 20 miles per hour where I wanna make this test. Okay, 17, 18. Go ahead and stop at that mailbox over there. Now that was very controlled, right at about that eight to nine foot mark. And a little bit of skid in there, but just the smallest little bit. Let's go ahead and see if we wanna do like a full lockup and let's see how, how she handles. Again, shooting for about that 20 miles per hour. Now let's go ahead and do a full lockup at the mailbox. <laughs> okay, 
came to a full stop probably at the uh, seven ish foot mark so a little bit better than our controlled stop that we did earlier um, and even though we were skidding a little bit it wasn't too bad I didn't feel like I was losing control or the tail was flying around so even if you got a hammer on the brakes with these you know these zoom hydraulic brakes they're really gonna really gonna stop you even though you're going fast and you're on this this fat bike this fat bike all right, so let's hop off and let's talk about the walk mode here. So that is one of the features on this bike. Go ahead and stop real quick. So when you want to enter the walk mode, you are going to hold down the down button. So we're gonna hold that down and that's gonna put us in walk mode. And it's saying it's right about that 3.5 miles per hour. A little quick as far as a walk mode goes, but if you really had to get somewhere and you wanted to walk, well, then you could do that. Now it does have the cruise control for walk mode, so I'll let it go and it's still it's still walking. And if it had it balanced, I could just go by itself. So the ways that we can get out of that are we can either press and hold that bottom key again, or we just tap on the brakes. It's got those motor inhibitors in there that's gonna shut off our walk mode. That is probably the quickest, safest way, giving it that little tap and then Boom, walk mode, you know, it's off. I was still walking, I guess, but the bike wasn't taking me. I was, you know, pushing the bike. Ugh. So if you want to turn on the lights, you are going to press and hold this top button. So we're out here, you know, we've got the Texas sun. It's gonna give us a little indicator that our light's on right there. And then lean down here, see if it's working. She is working, a couple of LEDs in there. I haven't taken this particular bike out at night, but it looks like this light is very on par with some of those lights. Maybe not necessarily bright enough to where if that was the only light source out in, you know, the pitch darkness, I might not want to ride. Or if I was going to be doing that, probably would be riding a little bit slower. But, you know, you've got options there as far as upgrading to other bike lights. We covered that uh, RN 1500 from Olight here recently. Now that's a bright light. 1500 lumens and uh, yeah it was uh, it was kind of ridiculous so when you're riding with something like that you know you're just going 20 miles an hour in the in, in the darkness no problem because you can see everything for 45 feet ahead of you so if that's something you're gonna be doing that is something I'd probably look at either upgrading it altogether I believe that light down there is pretty plug-and-play so if you wanted to find something else that was gonna run off of the same connection you could do that or you know upgrading to something that you could put on your handlebars and that also gives you the option to bring it up a little bit higher which is a little bit safer in the long run get your light up towards the eye level of people you know in cars or, or things like that so as far as the noise goes you can hear the motor but uh, you know one of the things we run into a lot with these big fat tires with those uh, with those knobbies is they produce a lot of road noise so depending on kind of how you know the audio is translated and captured here you might hear a lot of noise and most of that is that road noise just go right to this tree that's why we wear helmets folks that's why we wear helmets so when little kids who are pulling a cooler full of who knows what come along the trail and you got to go through a tree you go through a tree and you know what it didn't hurt at all at all So we're just cruising. I'm not pedaling, obviously, anymore. I did my pedaling earlier, okay? So now we're just uh, cruising and having a good time, right around that 20 miles per hour. So the nice thing about that is if you live in a place that is a little bit more strict on what you can and cannot ride, and they're looking for a classic, you know, class three configuration of the bike, that's what this is. So we can go faster than that 20 miles per hour if we are using pedal assist, but when we're using just a throttle, it's gonna get that 20 miles per hour. You know, now it's staying 21. I remember I'm trying to make this point, it only goes to 20. There you go, it's dipping back down. And as far as the battery readouts goes, I don't know if you saw that just there, it is a little bit predictive. So when I got on the bike, you know, we had full power, maybe there's like one of those bars missing. And then as soon as you go to hit on the throttle, then 
it will let you know how much battery you have. So some people like that, some people don't. They want to know, you know, exactly how much juice they have in there. They want a, a readout that's displaying, you know, how much of the juice they have in there, and they can kind of make their own decisions as far as what they think they can do, depending on how they're riding the bike. You know, pedal assist level, terrain, this, that, and the other. But I kind of like the predictiveness to it because it's like, hey, if you're going to use the bike like you're using it, this is how much battery you have left. So I don't know. I see the pros and cons both ways. Just something to know. So if you get on your bike and you, you know, maybe you don't pay attention to when you get on and you're just using the throttle to get up a hill and you look down, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to make it. You know, unless you're going to be doing that the entire way to where you're going to go, you'll probably be all right. It's been a while since I've been on a full suspension e-bike with the, with the fat tires and man, I missed it. It's, it's cool. It's like being on a, uh, you know, a four-wheeler, but it's just missing half of the wheels. You know, we got these huge tires. Now these ones, these particular tires, they go up to 20 PSI, and I think I've got them at, you know, 18, 19, closer to the, the top there. But if you were gonna be going on some softer terrain, sand, you know, something like that, then that is something where you can play around with those PSIs, lowering the PSI down. You know, I've seen some people running two, three, four, five, which is wild. Um, so yeah, I can't even imagine how smooth of a ride that would be. You know, you got three, four PSI in there plus the full suspension. And then, you know, if you take the bad advice of adding a seat post suspension, if you do fall asleep because it's so comfortable, you know, at least you'd fall in the, uh, in the sand and, you know, maybe you'd be all right. Well, guys, I think we've pretty much covered everything. So I think that is going to do it for our review of the Cyrusher XF690. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know down in the comments. I love talking to you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. And that is gonna do it for our review of the Cyrusher XF690. If you wanna know more about Cyrusher, I'll have a link to their website down below. And if you guys have any questions about the bike or there wasn't something I covered, please let me know down in the comments. I love talking to you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.